all want to make our place in this world We all want our voices to be heard Everyone wants a chance to be someone well, welcome everybody, and we are here with Buzz Caster, and Buzz is being inducted into the CARB Hall of Fame for 2015. First off, Buzz, let me say uh, congratulations on being inducted into the CARB Hall of Fame. Thank you very much, Mike. Thank you. Yeah, it's quite an honor. I mean, it's, it's, it's unbelievable. I, I'm so proud and so happy. It's a who's who of racing in and around. I mean, we've got a few people from out of town, like Joe Kosiski last year, for, you know they inducted him but uh, it is a who's who of racing and your dad actually was responsible for several things in Kansas City racing history but one of them was getting you started to be interested in the racing and my understanding is that he was printing the programs for Lakeside Speedway and you helped with that plus you were selling them at the Speedway and that kind of got your interest going as far as racing was concerned Yes, it did. Yes, uh, uh, they they printed a program at Lakeside Speedway, and and and, and we sold it as, as as very young boys, me and my brothers. Yeah. How much were they? I'm thinking back then. I'm thinking they were a quarter, twenty five <laughs> cents for a program back then. And I presume you made something off of it. What? Did, how much did you guys make? I think Mom gave us a nickel a program. Plus, we'd get. Once in a while, we, we, we'd get tip from a from a customer fan. Yes. Yeah, I'll be darned. That had to be a thrill, though. I mean, uh, as I remember, I started going there in '55, and I think I was 13. But the fun and excitement of that old track, I mean, uh, it was just unbelievable. It was un unbelievable out there. The the uh, two tiers that they had, yeah. you just you you're just never see another Lakeside Speedway like that. It, it was a heck of an atmosphere, and uh, it, I remember it had a boilerplate wall. Yes, and, uh, definitely. And, uh, and and just it, it was just an amazing facility. I know you raced there. You, you never did come close to going over that one end where that big embankment was, did you? No, I, <laughs> no, no. But I know, no, I know there were some guys. Uh, I know off the top of my head, Dave Wall, I yeah. remember, I think, went over that wall, and I think there's a couple of other, but yes, yeah. that, that, you didn't want to do that out there. I'm sure one you remember, because I think you raced with him a little later on, I think, was Denny Crooks, that went over it in a Carmen Ghia. Oh, yes, yeah, he did, <laughs> yes. Yeah, Denny did, absolutely. Yeah. In 1975, you decide, though, that you're going to get your feet wet in this racing deal, and... Uh, Kind of a strange occurrence, but you end up with a 66 Chrysler New Yorker that had belonged to Ed Young, who of course was the owner of Riverside Stadium. And you put a roll cage in it and go racing. Can you tell me a little bit more about that? Yes, yeah, Ed, Ed Young uh, owned Riverside and owned Red X over there. And just in conversation with my dad, uh, he was going to, uh, dad told him he was gonna try to start this new class over there. And Ed said that he had a, uh, an old Chrysler sitting in a fence over there, and uh, he gave it to my dad, and then we had uh, Tom Beerman put a roll cage in it, and that was actually my my first race car. Any success, or or, or or not, because I know this was your first time, and we'll get into this in a little while, but... I, I had, you know, fairly good success. Uh, didn't didn't really win, win with the car, but it, it was all new to me, and it was like any anybody starting out in in racing. It, it was uh, a learning experience. 76, you sell the car to Tex Tanner, of which he has quite a bit of success. He goes on to win the points championship the following, or that year in 76, but you end up building a 66 Chevelle, and uh, you pick up your first feature win in that Chevelle. Yes, that yes, year. yes. We uh, we sold it, and, uh, and 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 Tom put a roll cage in it, and uh, and and yes, and that that's when you know learning more, and uh, and and, uh, and even though the class was growing, a lot of guys were racing in that class, started in that class, and uh, you finally did. Yeah, we just got a little bit 
better and better. Yeah, the learning process just continued on. That had to be a little bittersweet, though, to know that you sold that car that the guy wins the points championship. Oh, <laughs> yeah, and Tex had raced before and uh, had a lot of experience. And, uh, and yeah, it was... Uh, it, it, I was happy for him, you know, and uh -huh. stuff. In, in one hand, but on the other hand, I was like, I wonder why I couldn't, couldn't go as fast as Tex was going in it. And that New Yorker, man, that had to be, uh, how do you want to say it, uh, a really good car for that class because, as I recall, a lot of those people were, that were in that class were all starting out, and there was a little bit of banging and bumping going on, and that big old heavy Chrysler had to have helped him out, I'm sure. Oh, yeah, yeah, and... Uh, <laughs> Yes, it did. Yes, it did. Uh, in 79-81, against your dad's advice, <laughs> we know how dumb our dads could be or smart, <laughs> as it turns out. But anyway, you decided to buy a car from Joe Wallace, and you say, Dad was right. I should have never got in that class. What happened? Well, we. I, I, told, him, I told my dad that... Uh, that I wanted to go late model racing, and uh, and, and and we had uh, the muffler shop down there that was doing pretty good, and uh, he said uh, he said he said well he said son he said you can do what you want to do but he said he said you you can't afford that late model and I said oh yeah dad yes I can dad uh, I said you know we uh, split some money up through the muffler shop and. Uh, and uh, I took my part of it, and uh, and uh, he took his part of it, and uh, he was right. I, I I couldn't afford the late model. He still had his money, and my money was gone. <laughs> Answer me this, uh, Buzz. Was it uh, was it just tires or more expensive motors? What was what was the problem? It was a combination of. Of, of, of the class people were starting to put big motors in them it was a combination of motors uh, experience I had no no clue about a late model and uh, uh, it, I mean it wasn't nothing against Joe ball means because that car had won some races uh -huh. and what have you mainly it was experience motors and tires and uh, the, the class was just starting to get expensive right, back okay. then all right in 8081 probably what happens next is going to affect the racing in the Kansas City area for decades to come and what that is is that you and or your dad you guys go up into Iowa and you buy a what's going to be a new class and it's growing in the United States it's the IMCA modified but you guys go up there and, and get in contact with Keith Kanak and end up buying uh, a turnkey car for a couple of different reasons, but IMCA racing starts coming to the Kansas City area. Yes, yes. Uh, it was late models were really expensive back then, and Keith had come up with this class uh, that you where you could basically a lot of salvage yard and home built cars. You know, you could build your home build your car and a lot of salvage yard type parts on them. To try to uh, to try to to start a new class that looked racy, it had open wheels on the front to try to encourage some of the open wheel people, but yet it had a you know full body on the back part of it, the sides and back, mm -hmm. and uh, yeah, I, I, yeah, we went up there and Keith had a car that he had built, and uh, and we bought it. I'll never forget for twenty five hundred dollars turnkey and, and brought it home. And, and we and, uh, we promoted with it, had it at the car show, and kind of per tried to. Uh, Dad started promoting it, this new class. Yeah. Well, from what I can remember, there were a lot of Vega bodies, Gremlin bodies, stuff like that. Because, like you say, it was more or less just the the back half of the car was covered. Right. Absolutely. Yes. A lot of Vegas Gremlins. And uh, and yes, mainly Vegas and Gremlin bodies, just the back half yeah, from yeah, the yeah, front just, doors back. Just some kind of small body that you could cover up the back. Yes, end. yes. But there again, this was a class where a lot of the guys who had been racing street stocks for a few years were wanting to move on to something else, and it gave them the opportunity to kind of take a step up and, and get ready to 
go between the street stocks and the late models or if they were wanted to go on the sprints. But just, like I say, it just changed the face of racing in Kansas City after that. Uh, I, I'm not going to say it wasn't ever the same, but it seemed like that the late models and the sprints were kind of not fading away, but they were becoming less, and the modifieds would eventually be the class of choice, I think, for, for racers here in Kansas City. And you and your dad, maybe your dad more than you, had the foresight to see that and, and to bring that forward. Right, yeah. Yeah, what it did is uh, as time went on, the, the street stock guys could move up and also the open wheel guys, some of them that had been out of racing, uh, got the bug and actually built or bought cars and they come yeah. back and race it a little bit or their kids did or, mm -hmm. uh, I mean, uh, it, it, was, it was just a, a really great time. Mm -hmm. The timing was just perfect to start a new class and get let the street stock guys move yeah. up and some of the 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 older guys that had been out of race had actually come back and raced a few years in the modified class so it, it was yeah. it, it was re it was really neat lane brothers comes to mind when you talk about the open wheel guys that came back into it absolutely and they came into it fast didn't they they come into <laughs> it fast the lanes i remember jl cooper uh -huh. his brother I think uh, uh, Ville Hauer over there with Beaver Tool and Die, uh -huh. uh, and, and and some of his buddies that were open wheel. I mean, that's just a few I can think of, and and I, I know I'm missing some people, but that's just yeah. a few off the top of my head that I can remember that. Uh, and, and 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 were successful. A lot of them were successful. Of course, Lane, Lane's definitely. Yeah, without a doubt. Uh, in '81, you do pick up your first feature win in that class. And like you say, you're running with guys like Ron Parsley, Frank Hedge, who were street stock drivers, the Coopers, Lanes, guys like that. But you do get your first win. Do you remember anything about that buzz at all? It, I, I remember some about it back then when, when you when you when you first start racing, you know, and you, you get your your first win. I mean, you're you know elated and, and happy, and everyone's happy, and, and and that's been a long time ago. So, yeah. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, I, I, I'm sure. They're, they're, they're very happy and very proud of it, and uh, mm -hmm. and, 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 and my crew that, that was helping me at the time, yeah, I, it, it, was, it was neat getting that first win. Special, especially in a new class like that. Absolutely. Do you think maybe you guys had a little jump on them in that you had a car that was already put together and made and set up, so to speak? Uh, possibly uh, a, a little bit, maybe a little bit of, 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 a, of an advantage. And uh, the first car I had was what you call a leaf spring car, mm -hmm. and it just happened to be, it was just a very good car. It just happened to, to, to work good and, and run good. And, and, we, and we didn't have as many, you know, the class started off, I think we had six or seven, eight cars to yeah. start off with. But as time went, uh, uh, it started evening out competition started yeah. evening out and uh, it just got tougher Figure, people started figuring out how to make it Absolutely. work yes. what, what, what's yes. going on um, in 88 through 91 you kind of decide that maybe it's time to make a change and with the expenses starting to escalate now in the modified class why uh, you, you turn to the Charger class and start running the Charger do you remember is this a car you build or are you driving for somebody uh, the <clears throat> the Charger car, uh, the first one that we built was a uh, uh, Jeff Clem was running Charger cars, and we was kind of sponsoring him through our salvage yard. And, and my partner at the time, Rick Towers, uh, he was a Ford guy, so we took and we and we, we built a Ford Thunderbird. And no one was running Ford hardly back then, other than maybe maybe Morant when he uh -huh. he raced I seventy the Morants. And uh, and my partner was uh, he he bled blue. He was that much of a Ford guy, <laughs> and so we, we we built a Ford Charger car, a Thunderbird, and and, and we raced it, and, uh, and 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 done 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 real real good with it. Now was this still dirt, or were you running some asphalt or asphalt and dirt, or it it, it was just it, it was just asphalt. We it was just asphalt only with it, and. Uh, and before that, we did do a, a little bit of, uh, we did do uh, some modified asphalt racing also mm -hmm. a couple of years before that and uh, actually won the points at Lakeside 
the first year was asphalt. Was that a big transition? Was that hard to, to move from the dirt to the asphalt? I mean, uh, granted, you probably weren't dealing with the horsepower and the speed that they have nowadays if you had to try to make that transition now, but was it very hard to go from the dirt to the asphalt? It was uh, asphalt racing at that time, and, uh, and dirt racing is about the same way now, but at that time in, in 89, 88, uh, it was technical, very technical. Asphalt cars were very technical. You couldn't manhandle cars around the track or you'd burn your tires up. And and, and, uh, uh, and I, I enjoyed the asphalt racing, actually. I, I, it was just cleaner. Yeah. But it was follow the guy and then get underneath them. You didn't see as much pull out and pass four or five cars, you know, so yeah. it, it, it was... That, that, that part of it, you know, as a fan and stuff, watching it probably wasn't as good as dirt, but as a racer, and I always like to work on my own cars and piddle on them, technical-wise, I enjoyed that that part of it. Yeah. I was going to say, that had, that, I think that's what I, I've heard from a lot of people was, man, I didn't have to get all that mud off with it. Absolutely, yes. <laughs> there, yes. there wasn't 10 or $15 at the car right. wash. No tear-offs, <laughs> and you could see, and yeah. I mean and what have you. I mean, I, I enjoyed the asphalt race, and I really enjoyed it. Yeah. Well, we're without it now. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, I, I don't know about you, but uh, occasionally I just have to make that once-a-year trip down to I-44. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. To yes. see an asphalt race, and boy, it brings back a ton oh, yeah. of memories when I go down absolutely. there. Absolutely. I, I don't know if you and Becky do that or not, but, man, it's... It's an, I know you're busy during the summer, so you, we, probably, you probably don't get to go. Yeah, we went down there once. We went to Branson a few years ago uh -huh. when it was asphalt, and we stopped and, and watched the asphalt race and just watched it, and I, we enjoyed it. Yeah. I enjoyed it. Uh, in 1993, you're still racing, but you're building race cars at the shop, and John O'Neill is actually working for you, and you guys are building chargers, pony stocks, street stocks, and uh, you're really kind of getting into the, the asphalt racing pretty hard, it looks like. Yes, because it had changed. Uh, dirt went away pretty quick around here, and, 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 and everything was asphalt. And uh, and we had a salvage yard down there, and we wanted to, uh, uh, you know, I've, I've known O'Neill's for a long time. And, uh, and, and John, uh, uh, we were just talking and called him, and uh, he came down, and him and his dad, Senior, helped also. Uh -huh. Uh, when he was off from the fire department, and uh, and we started building asphalt cars, and pony stocks, street stocks, uh, modifieds, and uh, ha had pretty good success with, with that. Uh, we had a uh, uh, Shane Roach ran real good with yeah, our cars. Yeah. Mark Peer won points with one of our Chargers, and and, and yeah, we, we we was we was real real, real happy. We were really 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 done good. Had a Rod Corden like one points in a pony stock that that, that uh, we had built. So, yeah, we, it, it was success successful build them cars. Didn't hurt to have that O'Neill kid around, did it? I learned a lot from John <laughs> Jr. and I learned a whole lot from his dad, John yeah. Sr. Yeah. Very very sharp yeah. chassis. Very his dad, very sharp. Yes, yeah. I learned a lot from John Sr. and Jr. Yeah. They, as far as I'm concerned, they were or had to be pretty close to the number one asphalt racers around the Kansas City area, and that's saying a lot, but uh, I think that's true as far as what I saw performance-wise on the track. Absolutely, and I mean, just amazing behind the scenes what O'Neill Sr., he, he, and Junior both, but Sr. was, uh, was very very smart on chassis yeah. and and it just i learned a lot a lot of fabricational skills and and asphalt chassis setup i mean they they, they were really really good yeah in 60 or i'm oh, sorry in 99 uh, one of your favorite moments as you've said in racing uh happens as you start driving for chris and linda Knoll, and i believe this takes place up at i-35 speedway tell me about that way uh, I've known Chris and Linda Knoll for many years, and, and they, they had always owned cars and, and had uh, uh, a couple different people drive, drive for them and what have you, and so they had just asked me if I wanted to drive their car, 
and uh, I told them that I would, and uh, and 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 they had never won a feature. They had been racing for all oh, probably ten or twelve years, never won a feature, and, uh, wow, and, a, long time. and a long time. And uh, and and I won a, their first feature form up at I-35, and uh, and and of course. Uh, they went on USMTS racing and traveling and what have you, and was very successful with that. So I'd see him now and then, and I'd say, "I bet you, I bet you that little old trophy that I want is at the back of all these six-foot trophies you have." And uh -huh. they looked at me and they said, "No." They said, "It's at the very front." Uh, of uh, it meant so much to them yeah. to win that first feature. So I, I always, always remember that story and that conversation and. Yeah. It just really, it just as a driver and a racer, mm -hmm. it, it really made it really made me feel good that they, uh, that, that, that they, they 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 had not forgot mm -hmm. that very first win. You know, that's something that I think about your career that kind of runs through it is this wasn't necessarily for Buzz. It was for Linda and Chris. It was it was a win for them. Absolutely, yeah. yes, it was. And yes. sometimes you get that confidence, then it just carries you on to right. Things. Absolutely. Yeah. Two thousand four, you're uh, thinking that uh, might be time to get out of racing. In fact, I think you said on the phone the other night you thought you had the cure, <laughs> but it didn't stick. But you are helping your son race go karts, and of course your daughter about this time is racing a street stock at. Lakeside, tell us how these plans kind of changed. Well, we we were racing a go a go kart with, with my son uh, across the street from Lakeside over over there at uh, at the Thunder Lake Thunder Lake at the go kart track, and my youngest daughter Angie, uh, we, we was racing with her. I built her a street stock, and I was really having fun. I I, I remember just a quick story. Uh, uh, Billy Deckman had spoke. At our car meeting, about all the wins he had and all the racing he'd done, that he had more fun when he was racing with his daughter at I-70. Uh -huh. And and I told him after that, after the meeting, and after his little speech, that that he's absolutely right. I had a lot of fun with my daughter. Granted, they had 50 street stocks, and 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 I think we made one A feature. But the time she was out here, I don't care if she was running last. Uh -huh. or mid-pack I mean I would just grin them from ear to ear I mean I, I really enjoyed that that uh, uh, part of, of, of racing when she was racing but she uh, she uh, come up to me one day and said that that she was uh, going to expect a child and I told her I said well it probably won't be a good idea to keep racing and she said absolutely so my a neighbor and a guy that was helping us, Donnie Billings, a good friend of mine, said, you ought to get in that car and race it the last couple of three weeks. And I'm like, no, Donnie, I I've, I finally got the cure, you know. Unless they like smoking that first cigarette exactly, after you quit. Exactly, <laughs> so, so he talked me into uh, getting into the car, and, and, and I blame the... The, the rest of this racing on Donnie because uh, <laughs> we we had to build a new car from the ground up that winter so <laughs> thanks Donnie <laughs> <laughs> from 2006 <clears throat> you guys build the new car but then from 2006 to 2008 uh, the street stock racing seems to be a good fit for you Buzz as you guys together have some pretty good success three pretty good years yes we did yes yes we did and uh, and it, it was tough competition out there at, Boy, at that mean, time I mean a lot of guys had uh, got better and, 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 and got into the class some of the guys were like me had raced modifieds and and, mm -hmm. uh, and, and had kind of dropped back for yeah. economical reasons or, or whatever so uh bear comes to mind when you say yeah, absolutely bear. probably one of the best street stock drivers around bear yes yeah. yes and uh and uh and, and so we we built this street stock and, and had a lot of fun and, and had success with it had a lot of success from what i understand now in those three years you finished second in the points two years 
And then finally win the points, if I remember right, in 2008 in the Street Stock Club. Is that correct? Yes, that, that, that's correct. And we built that car. I could tell some stories about that car, but I'm not going to do it right now. But we, we, we built that car with a lot of John O'Neill Sr. Oh, really? Ingenuity, and he was a master at loophole and rules and stretching <laughs> rules. And it had a lot of that in in that car. I guarantee you, no, nobody liked that car that we built. <laughs> I, I think I, what I hear the saying nowadays is it's built in the spirit of the rules. Right. Not, not, not uh, necessarily completely, but in the spirit right, of the rules. Right, right. That I, I never forget the, the tech man out there at the time. Yeah. Tom was his name, an older gentleman, and uh, we got off to a real rocky start. <laughs> and I'll never forget when he'd tell me, Buzz, I don't really see anything in the rules about that, but I don't like it. And when he would say that, that meant, Buzz, you take it off the car. It better be off the car by next week. Uh -huh. So whenever he said that, I knew, <laughs> I, I, I knew, I knew what the next sentence was going to be. <laughs> But we had a lot of fun. I had a lot of fun with that with that car. I was gonna say, if you were second in the points or won the points, you guys had to be running good and, and running up front, and that's always fun. I don't care who right. you are. It's always fun. 2009, 2010, you have one of the most rewarding ventures in racing, as you say, as you team up with Kevin Sloan. First, you're driving for Kevin in a, I think a second or a backup car but then you rebuild the car that he wrecked down at CMS and get Kevin back into racing. Right, that, that's, a, that's an experience that I'll never forget. Uh, Kevin had an accident at, at another track and, uh, and, and uh, he gave us, paralyzed him from his waist down and, and I had stayed in touch with him while he was rehabbing and stuff and he kept asking me, you know, if I'd help him if he, if he thought he could go race it again and of course, you know, I said yes I would, just trying to keep his spirits up and what have you, so, uh -huh. uh, so yeah, I, we, I, it just wasn't me, there were some other people involved with it also, right. but we, uh, we rebuilt the car that, that he had his accident in and, uh, uh, we built it, and and we built hand controls for it, and and, and got and got him back back on the track. And uh, I'll never forget the first time he went out, and the first time he come in, there wasn't a dry eye in the pit. So a lot of people come over, were just happy for him, and and his and he was just he was he was like a kid in a candy store. I mean, it was it was an experience that 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 I will never forget, and uh, I was really fortunate and, and and really happy that 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 I got to enjoy that with him when he went back racing. Yeah, pretty unique experience. Yes. Had to be. Yes, Had lots to be for of everybody. A lot of support from the tracks, the fellow racers and fans would come down and, and look in that car and look at them hand controls and we explained to them how they'd work and they were just they would just uh of course Kevin's he's real shy, you know, yeah. and and uh and I'd say go over there and, and talk to him, you know, and, and ask him, you know, and uh -huh. and uh, have him explain this to you and what have you, how it works. But uh, uh, and 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 we're still real good friends, talk all the time, and that, yeah. that was that that was a experience for just not only me but my wife and everyone that was involved in helping him. It, it was I'll never forget it. Yeah, talk about the uh, racing family. That's a good example. Absolutely, people coming together Absolutely. and working for yes. a common cause to help. That's somebody. right. That's right. Couldn't explain it any better than that. In uh, 2011, um, you reclaim an old Noel car that's sitting out in the field, and you bring that rascal home and you rebuild it and you start driving it at I-35, as well as. Uh, Driving a charger for Mike Johnson. Yes, yes, we we took and we uh, and we uh, uh, Chris and Linda had a car that didn't have very many races on it. That uh, I think Tommy Meyer was driving for him. It had wrecked it and knocked the front stub off of it. And he had been telling me I could come up and get this car, come up and get this car. So I, we went up and got it, and uh, we put a stub on it and fixed it. And, uh, and Mike and Kyle Johnson uh, had asked me if I wanted to drive, would interest in driving to Grand National, and I said I'd do that. So we so we did kind of double duty mm -hmm. up at up at I-35. 
Now, this was no young guy either. I mean, uh, no, ha, ha, no. <laughs> that had to be a little taxing, didn't it? it I mean, it, physically. It was. It was. That was. Uh, uh, it, it, it was. You get in them wild modifieds and uh, rearing up and carrying on, and then get, jump, jump in a in, in a grand national, which is a lot tamer and what uh -huh. have you. I was. I told my wife. I said, I don't know if I can do this or not. I'm, you know, and. Uh -huh. uh, and, and 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 what have you, but it, it it was a lot of fun. We really had a lot of fun and enjoyed it. 2012 and 13, you're just kind of hitting and missing here, driving, not all the time, but every once in a while here or whatever. And I'm sure helping out somebody else, but just you know, time in racing where you're kind of sitting back and seeing what's going on. But in 2014, you decide to start driving a Grand National again for the Johnsons. Plus, you start helping two up-and-coming young drivers in both of the Johnson boys, and uh, this had to be kind of a little different situation because you're helping them and driving against them, and that'd yeah. be crazy. Yeah, it, it, that, that, that that that's a heck of an experience, you know. Uh, uh, it, it was first of all they had changed they had changed sanctioning bodies and. Uh -huh. uh, and so we we, we kind of I told Mike I was probably just going to park my modified didn't know what I was going to do, and he asked me if I would drive the same Grand National I drove a couple of years earlier, and I said to allow me to do some racing, and I said oh yeah I'd love to, and then and he said uh, he asked me if I would kind of help the his boys, uh, uh, very talented both of them, lots of talent, and uh, and I said yes I'd I'd love to help them. Because I'd helped Kevin and, and uh, a few years before, and and so yeah, so yeah, it was uh, it, it's it's I I, I could I, I could probably write a book on just a, a year of an experience with with uh, <laughs> with teammates, uh, uh -huh. uh, mom and dads, uh, <laughs> uh, uh, you know. Uh -huh. uh, Learning on the racetrack, how to race, and uh -huh. sometimes uh, driving a little too hard and, and tearing stuff up, and then uh, and uh -huh. oh yeah, yeah. But uh, <laughs> uh, again, enjoyed every minute of it. Still enjoying it. We're still doing it uh, uh -huh. as of this year. Uh, same deal. Uh, uh, but yes, yes, uh, that's that that is that that is, and I've really enjoyed. Uh, helping and tutoring in a, in any young driver or anybody to get into the sport. Uh, you know, now in my career, I, I, I really enjoy that. Yeah. I, I really enjoy it. I was going to say, it, it, it's got to give you some satisfaction to see the results of what you're saying or teaching them and when it actually happens on the track. And they do good. Absolutely. That, that, it, that's when it gives you that self-satisfaction. A, absolutely, and and, uh, and 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 the satisfaction of uh, of showing them how to make stuff, mm -hmm. build stuff, set their car up, and, and them picking it up and and, and yeah. doing it. And uh, uh, like I was telling you the other day, you know, I, I'm kind of old school. Uh -huh. I made my daughter work on her car. And, uh, and 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 the boys the, are doing are doing the same thing right uh, now. So, yes, I so, agree. If you break it, you'd have to fix it. Absolutely. That that's <laughs> how that's how I am. And uh, makes you appreciate it a little bit more when you got to do it yourself. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Yes. You know, I've heard from a, a pretty reliable source, and I'm going to throw Eddie under the bus on this deal. <laughs> Eddie Ingram. He told me that you've got a little black book and that nobody, and I say that nobody, looks at that black book but you. That's true. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Have, yeah. You, have you kept that and added to it over the oh, years, yeah. I presume? Oh, it's yeah. got setups and oh, yeah. Yeah. stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. That's one thing about a racer. A racer won't tell you everything, no matter who you are. And especially if we're talking about my son-in-law, because he could be racing in the same class with me the next week <laughs> if he's in another class. If anybody knows my son-in-law, yeah. but yes, yes, there, yeah, a racer, any racer will not tell you everything. I was going to say, won't give you the full scoop. The it full might lead scoop. you down Absolutely. the garden path. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. Buzz is there 
and I think you've been at it about four decades, 40 years, somewhere yes. in that neighborhood. Is there, and that's a lot to, to cover, but is there one moment or one race or one win or anything in that time that, that just really stands out? I imagine there's probably several, but can you pick one? You there don't have to, but... Right, you know. yeah. It, it, it's really hard to pick one, you know, uh, uh, but... Of course, early on in my career, it would probably have been my first feature win was was, was probably mm -hmm. awesome. Uh, uh, you know, as my career went on, uh, uh, my first win in all the different classes that I've raced in, uh, uh, you know, uh, you know, uh, actually not me driving as a moment, but uh, racing with my daughter and my son, mm -hmm. uh, winning that first feature for the Knowles, uh, all the point championships I've won. Uh, people don't realize how hard, how hard they are to win. Mm -hmm. uh, e e even back, you know, when I've in the 80s uh they don't realize how hard they are to win a point championship but uh i would say uh, uh going racing with my family uh, uh you know a lot a lot of good memories traveling out of town one of the few times we went racing with my family mm -hmm. uh and the fans oh my goodness the the the, the fans that that i've met over the years but probably more recently uh, probably would be winning the uh, Caster Celebration yeah. uh, night at I-35 uh, up there with Mike and Kyle Johnson at their track. Probably with with probably 50 to 75 family members coming down from Iowa that one time uh -huh. to watch that is probably uh, is probably I would say my you know my my biggest here recently my 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 biggest win and uh, we've been lucky to do that twice and uh and, and so i would say you know i could go on and on yeah. and there's so many of them right. so, so many of them it's kind of like uh, playing in the world series in front of your family and winning absolutely absolutely it's, it's kind of kind of was right and my kids are, are uh, two of my my daughters don't live in kansas city anymore and so yeah. they come back for it and, and so it, it, it's, it's just real, real special. Yeah. Well, Buzz, uh, once again, let me uh, say congratulations on being Thank inducted you. into the Carb Hall of Fame. Quite, uh, quite well an deserved. honor. Well deserved. I, I just, I, I just, I think, I, I think about it all the time, and, and it's so. The I, I'm in in a group of, of people right. that, as a young boy, I grew up watching them race. And, uh, and, and, and some of them I've actually raced with, and, 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 and it's so uh, honored and proud to be in now with my dad, uh -huh. with my dad, so, right. Right. yes. Well, once again, congratulations, Thank buddy. you very much. Thanks. Uh, uh, Thank you, Mike. Thank you. We all have dreams we need to dream, but sweeter than air, star you can read. When you reach and find you found someone, you'll hold this world's most priceless thing, the greatest gift this life can bring. If you can look back and know you were loved, you were loved by someone. By someone, held by someone, meant something to someone, love somebody.